Hello everyone, welcome to another turn of Yamamoto's Folly, my play-by-email campaign against Pirate Joe playing as the Empire of Japan. It is December 8th, 1941, and after a successful December 7th, we're going to see what the Allies have to throw back at us this turn. I always find that uh, December 8th is a little bit tricky uh, for Japan. You have a lot of forces moving in a lot of different places, and many of them are vulnerable, which means that uh, it's possible that there could be some nasty strikes from uh, the Allies' turn on my shipping, uh, on my bases, uh, submarines vectoring to uh, where I have invasion forces or carriers. Uh, it's all very fraught. Um, front lines really haven't been established yet. And there's just a lot of moving pieces that he can pick at. Uh, I also made some strategic errors in the uh, uh, eastern side of the map at Wake Island. Um, I have an exposed invasion force there. There we go. Which he may hit with carriers. Um, yeah, wasn't good planning on my part. And I also have some... Uh, carriers around the Philippines that are vulnerable to submarines. So yeah, a lot's going on, but let's watch the turn, find out what happens. We start out with just a little invasion offloading there. It looks like Koto Baru. And offloading at Miri as well. Ooh, I have a mine sound. That doesn't sound good for me. Looks like two French destroyers. Three. Actually, these are the British destroyers uh, that are fleeing from Hong Kong. They encounter a patrol of two of my uh, uh, Japanese destroyers that I kind of have patrolling this area. Looks Greetings, like everybody. How's tricks? Oh, Orphan Anne, for the first Orphan time this game, Anne from Radio Tokyo, saying hello to all of her dog faces and boneheads wandering the Pacific Islands. Before we start the music, the Japanese High Command announced today that the Imperial Navy has achieved another great victory near Hong Kong. With the sinking of two carriers, a battleship, and numerous cruisers and destroyers. Or we just put five shells into uh, some low-value destroyers. Hey, it's, 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 it's pretty close, right? Anyway, our ships acquit themselves well, uh, and the British take the brunt of that. Have another uh, force here, Boreal and Austral, uh, coming from Quangshawan. I have a surface force here to intercept anything trying to flee. Uh, let's see how we do. These are very capable. Or actually, they, Austral and Boreal, I'm not sure if they're French. These also could possibly be British. I should know my uh, ships better. And we come out unscathed, but we don't do any lasting damage to the uh, enemy as well, with just two hits on the Austral. So yeah, it looks like they're coming south from Hong Kong. I have some patrols right here. And another patrol going to try to take out the Thanet. Uh, Thanet, I believe that's the one that we... Oh, it looks like <laughs> Fumazoki got the the, the uh, uh, worst side of that. Um, taking a shell from the Thanet and is on fire. Thanet takes two shell hits. I think the Thanet, though, is the ship that we saw um, with the Ans yesterday. That, uh, that bomber group flying from uh, Atacau or Pescadores. Now my uh, patrol group encounters the Thracen and the Scout. Another inclusive conclusive battle. <laughs> Fumazuki still on fire. They need to put out those fires there, or she's going to be in trouble. And Scout takes another two hits. Heavy fires, heavy damage. Hopefully that's going to slow her down a little bit and allow uh, air groups to take care of her. 
And it looks like the Thanet runs into this patrolling group again. I'm really glad I uh, tasked the surface task force here. Uh, but no, inconclusive. Heavy fires on the Thanet, though. So that looks like it for the naval phase. And we have Amphibious Assault at Mackin. That's my uh, troops just offloading on that unoccupied, unoccupied island. We have the sound effect of a submarine sinking. That could be one of our ships that hit, hits a mine. It also could possibly be uh, one of the subs that was on fire at Manila going under the waves. We'll see. Now, he named the turn Wings of Glory, which could mean that I could be into it for a nasty surprise in the air phase. We'll find out. Surface Task Force once again comes in contact with Thanet. I'm just going to speed through this. It's not a very exciting combat here. The Thanet is uh, giving as good she gets, though. Looks like she... Uh, places a uh, shell into uh, Minazuki, which is on fire. Uh, the Fumizuki has put out their fires, though, which is great, but the Thanet is finally sunk. One of my uh, uh, rowboats, our O-boats, uh, yeah, look at this, near Wake Island, there's some destroyers here. I think those destroyers are part of this carrier task force. Uh, my invasion task force could be in a lot of trouble here. Oh, SI-121 uh, does a great job, puts a fish into the side of the Dominion Monarch, which is a huge uh, passenger liner, very nice, juicy target there. Uh, we'll see if she makes it out. And a Dutch sub tries to uh, get into my one of my uh, uh, offloading uh, TFs, but uh, it's caught. Ooh. Oh, that could have been so good. Launches six torpedoes at Lexington. They all miss. I really need to hit the Lexington because uh, um, she's coming for my invasion task force there. And that's going to be painful. I have two CVEs in that invasion task force. Chances are they're both going to be destroyed. Uh, sloppy play from my part. I should have covered uh, Wake with uh, um, my uh, larger carriers. Some more ASW action off the eastern coast of Malaya, and we're on to the air phase. Let's see how this pans out. But I'm, I'm dreading it. I, I feel like it's not going to be good for me. Um, start off with some sweeps on Eba. Um, he has air bases here at Eba, at Clark, at Manila. Oh, at this base, which I forget the name of, and of course, Batan. So I'm going to need to try to neutralize four or five different air bases to really clear the skies above the Philippines. And then, of course, there's Cebu as well. Just a lot going on here. Sweeping his hurricanes, taking one out with no losses myself. And more zero sweeps. I really, he has a lot of Warhawks in the Philippines in Focus Pacific. I want to try to clear as many from the skies as possible. Crew destroyed by my zeros. Good job, guys. And when there's no resistance, you'll notice I just kind of skip through uh, the action uh, so you guys don't have to watch the plane flying against nothing. Right now, I'm sweeping Rangoon. Uh, the AVG, American Volunteer Group, Flying Tigers, is stationed at Rangoon, and some other bases in Burma start of the game and it's important that um, I don't let them build up and uh, start uh, causing problems for me in that theater. Swiffing Guam, Guam, Guam starts with a Buffalo Squadron so we're going to take some of those planes out. I lose one zero but take out four Buffaloes. Some more sweeps. Uh, this time a Moraine MS-410 takes to the skies, but um, is quickly brushed off. Some more sweeps against some uh, biplanes here at EVA. And take out three for no losses. 
Oh, we have a... No, it's just a bombing run. My Nell's, I think, trying to hit some of the shipping here. Escorted by Zeros, but these Hurricane uh, fighters stationed at Hong Kong are pretty good. And, unfortunately, uh, none of my torpedoes connect. They're going after Destroyer. Always hard to hit with torpedoes. More sweeps coming in. 36 P-46Bs and some P-35As as well. Look at those numbers climb. Lots of cap above Manila right now. Um, and it looks like Zeros are having a little bit of a tough time. Five Zeros destroyed, but eight of their planes destroyed. So still a good ratio for me. I can't be losing this many Zeros uh, in one sweep. It's just not sustainable. Another sweep, this time on Batan. Some Kates are trying to connect with Thracian, and they do! Nice job. So I moved a squadron of Vals and a squadron of Kates to be gone, which I took just last turn with paratroopers. This allows me to quickly get some um, planes with a good strike radius uh, down here into the Philippines and helps cut off his escape route through the Ch South China Sea from Hong Kong and Quangchow. In any case, two bomb hits on Thracian, which now has heavy fires and heavy damage, just like its partner, the Scout. Hitting the airfield here at Quang Chowan with Mabels, 56 of them fly, actually hitting the port. Looks like there's not much left to hit. Looks like he he's sorted the ships out of here or uh, scuttled them, I don't know which. Zero's flying uh, again on Clark Field, trying to get those sweeps, trying to lessen the number of fighters there. But he has a lot stationed in the Philippines to start. I lose three zeros. But look at that. Take out nine planes, including seven P-40Bs. That's great to see. And zero sweeps again. I have to say, I'm really pleased with the coordination of my strikes. The fact that these zero sweeps are going in before my bombing runs, that's not always the case. More sweeps. Take out another P-26A. Kind of feel bad shooting biplanes. Doesn't feel sporting, but oh well. Some sweeps over Clark, another Warhawk goes down, and finally some bombs go in, some bombing runs go in here. Not a lot of damage, uh, just four runway hits. Some sallies come in, and they do, mm, don't do well as well, just uh, four runway hits there too. A little bit of ground bombing, I'm just kind of softening up one of these uh, Chinese LCUs that is in clear terrain. And Sonya's and Ida's hitting the airfield of Quang Chowan. Again, don't do a lot of damage, just damage a uh, Virgo 697. Definitely not having the effects that I had last turn. 77 Sallies, though, are going after both the port and the airfield at uh, Rangoon. And we're getting some good damage messages from the ships, which is nice to see. Some good runway hits, it looks like, some damaged aircraft. So yeah, I'm uh, happy with that result. Well, let's look at the result first. Yeah, great job to, for, to these uh, Sallies. Two Blenheims destroyed on ground, two Warhawks, a Buffalo, a Moraine, MS-410. And we put a couple of, actually, a good amount of bombs into the uh, uh, shipping there. Not a lot of airbase hits, but that's fine. Next up, my Sallies. Again, doing some good work on the airfield there. Two Warhawks and a Blenheim destroyed. Again, runway hits are a little light. That's fine. Sonya's go after Quang Chow. And again, I need to change from port attack. There's just not any targets left there at the port for me to uh, attack. So um, the runway is what we need to concentrate on, which is Lily does. But again, a little disappointing damage here over Quang Chow. Looks like uh, some Dutch aircraft are trying to connect with uh, Yukikaze, one of my Japanese destroyers that I've kind of sorted in this sorted in this area to cut off his escape from the Philippines. Hudson tries to make it through and does not, and three more as well, easily swatted aside by my cap. 
Now we have some swordfish coming in. These are potentially dangerous if they can get through my cap. Uh, but it looks like I'm going to handle them without incident. I do lose an Oscar, uh, though, in the uh, fracas. Nine unescorted Blenheims aren't going to have a chance. And four of those go down. And these Blenheims, I have a light cap here, but I think they're going to have a rough time as well. Yeah, I'm not even sure why they were trying to uh, bomb there uh, at a ground target, but four of them go down. All right, so Wildebeest flying from um, Hong Kong, potentially dangerous for me. Um, the uh, cruiser Osama does take a bomb hit, um, so I'm going to have to keep a respectful distance from uh, Hong Kong until I neutralize uh, those torpedo bombers. So he's actually using his buffaloes on an attack roll, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, air attack on Saipan Naval Fortress, no effect, and he loses three buffaloes. Okay, so here we can see what's going on at Wake Island. He has two task forces. I imagine they're both his carrier task forces. This is my invasion task force. Let's count our hexes here. One, two, three, four, five. So definitely within range. He also has some older Dauntless on board, I think, which have actually a longer range than the SBD-3. I think the SBD-1s or SBD-2s maybe, I think have a range of seven or eight, so he can easily reach out and touch this uh, invasion task force, which is problematic, of course. Now I'm bombing the Guam airfield. Not only will this shut down these fighters that have been flying from here, but it's also going to do some runway damage, preventing him, hopefully, yeah, good runway damage from building up forts here and allowing me to invade Guam. I can't stop looking <laughs> at these two carrier task forces, though. Uh, it's going to get ugly, guys. It's going to get ugly. Uh, Betty's did a great job of shutting down the uh, Rival field yesterday with 110 runway hits. So um, they're going to continue that cleanup to ensure that uh, that runway stays shuttered. Just 17 hits this time, but doing a good job of damaging or destroying planes on the ground, including 15 Hudsons. I don't think that's true. I don't think there are 15 Hudsons at uh, Rival. I think my pilots are exaggerating their damage, which happens a lot in game. You always have to take all intel you get with a grain of salt. Um, that's what makes one of the things that makes War in the Pacific so great and so fun is that imperfect information, just like the real generals and admirals uh, in the war had imperfect op uh, information. Um, though as the Japanese, I have to say, my information is more imperfect than uh, uh, the Allies. They get much better signal intelligence than I do. Another great raid there on uh, Revolve, destroying and just damaging some planes. Oh, the tension of this carrier battle, of uh, this carrier strike, it's, it's killing me right now, guys. All right, 18 Bettys hitting Raval. Again, they do a good job. Uh, they'll make sure that uh, field stays shuttered. Bombing up Guam, skip through that, not very exciting. Okay, Vals. Again, this is a squadron that I placed at Vigon, specifically to try to catch some of the shipping fleeing uh, Luzon, and they catch DD Pope, put two bombs in it, promptly sink it. Great job, squadron. And Vals um, flying off of my uh, CVE here at Miri, part of the invasion task force. Uh, find these fleeing ships from Terracan, um, a oiler, and a tanker. Now, the British sailor is a good tanker. The AO Tan one, though, uh, people get excited about oiler kills sometimes, but the uh, AO Tans are pretty poor oilers. They're pretty slow, not very large capacity. Um, so they're not as, uh, they're not like a allied fleet oiler or anything like that. But we get some, uh, ship sinking sound. 
uh, Oscars are sweeping uh, Georgetown, try to take care of this cat. Let's see how they do against these buffaloes. That looks a little inconclusive. Yeah, just one of those buffaloes destroyed. I would have hoped that uh, um, more went down. Betty's flying against uh, the runway here at Wake. It's interesting that if these are the carrier task forces, and I think they're the carrier task forces, if they are, though, you would think that there would be cap above Wake. Because if he has his fighters set to, say, um, six range, which I think is the beginning range of the Wildcat, I think he has some buffaloes as well, which will have a little bit longer range than the, uh, the Wildcats. If he set them to cap and escort, he should have some cap over Wake. It's also possible that he did something else with his carrier planes. He might have set some squadrons just to cap zero and some squadrons to escort, in which case there wouldn't be cap above Wake. But we'll see what happens here. I ha I'm surprised we did not see a strike from him in the, uh, in the morning air phase. Or I guess this is still the morning air phase. It just seems it's gone on for a while. Uh, KB uh, is going to strike Manila here. Uh, still have some uh, uh, Warhawks in the air above the Hex. Uh, giving my uh, zeros a hard time. Yeah, oh, look at those zeros go down. That's that's unfortunate. Uh, those are really highly trained pilots, um, and to see so many uh, uh, go down is really tough. I don't know why his warhawks are performing so well. Part of the problem, though, I didn't sweep with Vanilla as much as I did uh, as much as I did uh, Clark. And that's kind of biting me in the ass right now. Yeah, look at those zeros go down. It's rough. Only 94 left over all of that. However, a good strike package does hit Manila. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to sink the rest of these ships at anchor. I'm going to skip through these damage notifications. There's going to be quite a few of them. My air losses this uh, this turn could be high. Lots of flak, uh, lots of air attrition. So, okay, so not as bad as I thought. Five zeros still go down. They're fighting 41 Warhawks, uh, and 12 of those Warhawks are destroyed. Let's look at the sunk list. Uh, Minesweeper Lark is sunk, and that's it. Just heavy fires and heavy damage for everything else. A little bit disappointing. Uh, that long-range Mavis tries to hit a destroyer at uh, Vincolin. Interesting choice. Oh, unfortunately, my Nels see those uh, uh, ships at Hong Kong. They fly unescorted, and this group of Nels is going to just get wiped out here. Yeah, nine destroyed. That's pretty much the entire flight. I, mean, I had 13, so only four uh, survive. Again, kind of rough day in the air for me. Ah, oh, it's my own fault. I didn't take care of the cap um, above Hong Kong. I was concentrated too much on Quing Chowan. Now we're doing a uh, air raid against Manila, trying to hit the airfield. Not a lot of damage done here. Val's doing another port attack, not against Quang Chowan, but Pak Hoi. Interesting choice. Have to obviously retask some of these uh, squadrons now that Quang Chowan is neutralized. And going against Pak Hoi again. So this is, uh, looks like KB2 here, and they're trying to hit Cebu. Good amount of cap over the, uh, the hex here. Let's see how they handle it. Looks like they do get through to the bombers, unfortunately, uh, but uh, my Kates are doing a good job at that airfield. See, I lose two Kates, two Vals, and a zero. But good numbers of planes destroyed on the ground. See, not just damage, but destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Uh, that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten destroyed on the ground. 
It's good to see. And a second strike. Coming from KB3, it looks like. Much smaller strike package, of course. It's just a couple of CVEs and a CLV. Uh, or CVL, I should say. Uh, I lose a Kate. Uh, a couple of planes destroyed on the ground. Well, three planes destroyed on the ground. Uh, more Dutch planes going after my uh, uh, task force, which is kind of stationed right here in Makassar Strait to catch anything that comes uh, south. I'm going to have to move it around, otherwise he can just move in some wildebeest or swordfish to Samarinda or Balikpapan or uh, Mender Germison and or Ternate or Terracan. In any case, lots of options to station some uh, dangerous uh, torpedo bombers, even flying bom with bombs, they can be dangerous and uh, do some damage to my task force. Blenheims come in, they hit the cap, no dice for them. Ooh, there's those wildebeest again, putting another bomb in uh, cruiser Asama. Um, Luckily, they're 500 pound bombs and not armor piercing, but Asama is going to need some yard time after this. Luckily, we haven't seen any fire messages. We haven't seen any messages about flooding or anything like that. So I think she's still in fighting shape. Betty's attacking Wake Island. You may say, hey, why don't they go after the carriers right here if that's what those are? But Betty's would just get shredded by Cap. It's, uh, they wouldn't even make it through. That plucky Mavis squadron again tries to uh, hit a uh, transport ship. My uh, Betty is flying from Cameron Bay, trying to uh, do some damage to the ground forces at Miri so I can quickly take the uh, Hex. But it's rough terrain. I think it's jungle, so they're not really doing any damage, unfortunately. Alright, so here we have a strike from from my carriers, it looks like, and not making it through. Five of my battles destroyed. Uh, that's flying from the CVEs. And again, so it's poor play on my part again. I did not expect to encounter his carriers. I should have. So the range of my vowels exceeds the range of my Claude escorts. And I should have reined that uh, range back in. Um, actually, if they had, they would have never gone after this task force in at all because the range of the clods just isn't high enough. Amazingly enough, no carrier strike from from those ships. And we know they were carriers now because we saw um, they had a cap. They had uh, those buffaloes. So that is absolutely his carrier task forces. Um, he starts with, instead of those single two carrier task forces in stock, he uh, starts with two. There's an additional, I believe, Lexington class carrier with each of them. They are also accompanied by some uh, nice battle cruisers, um, and it's a, they're they're powerful forces. I am going to need to 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 run uh, like heck, but I'm incredibly fortunate that he either did not spot my task forces, the range wasn't right maybe for the task forces uh, to uh, to sortie against my carriers. I'm not sure what happened, but the fact that I still have my invasion task force for at least one more turn is pretty amazing outside of Wake. Anyway, I was really uh, worried about that. Shock attack at Cota Baru. Yeah, great. Good result there. Uh, take it the first turn. That was my goal with the bombardment. Uh, two units retreat, one unit destroyed outright. Very minimal casualties for me, and now I have that hex. I can start moving um, some air units in uh, and start some methodical sweeping of Singapore. Shock attack here at Miri. Ooh, this does not go as well for me. Yeah, look at this. 274 casualties. Even though I had 3 to 1 odds, reduced fortifications to 0. I'm not sure why 
I took such large losses there um, when I had three to one odds. In any case, I took it down from fort level two to fort level zero. Um, we'll do a deliberate attack uh, next turn and see if we can take that hex at zero forts. I take a uh, Mackin, little atoll there. Should have a TF headed down to Tarawa pretty soon as well. In all, a uh, turn that didn't go perfectly, but it could have been a whole lot worse. And honestly, I got off really, really lucky. So, let's take a look here at Wake. Here's my surface task force that bombarded Wake. Uh, They're running away, of course. Here's my invasion task force that's headed for Wake. This is a lone CV that was supposed to rendezvous with his invasion task force and provide some additional air cover. This is very spotted. Let's just check out range here. I just want to see range. Six, range six. He should have flown. I don't know why he didn't. His planes didn't fly. Uh, this task force, no. This task force, yes. So the first thing that's going to happen is my invasion task force is going to skedaddle. It's going to head into the relative safety of these islands. Let's check to see how little, some zeros there. Okay, good. I have 48 zeros there at Roy Namur. So if I head down around Roy Namur, I can get under that air cover. And that, let's do a direct route. There we go. And we're going to remain on station. So we're going to get, and I'm going to run full speed too. Let's not take any chances here, guys. I can refuel pretty easily at any one of these islands. So I'm going to run south here. He can run south and try to catch me, but I'm going to have these 48 zeros on cap in addition to the cap here. My uh, service task force will continue to re return to truck. They are going to put a little bit more speed on, though. And... You know what? You are going to head to truck as well. So what's going to happen here is um, all these forces will run away. Truck has a ton of air power. Just look at that right there. So if he decides he wants to get close, he's going to pay the price. Um, and I have, with those 48 zeros again, I feel pretty good um, about and some nine zeros there plus the cap on his carriers. I feel pretty good about not not winning uh, any sort of engagement if he does a carrier strike, but making it painful of him and not losing everything in that carrier strike. So this is the KB right here, way out of position to assist with any of this. It'll be three or four turns before it gets there. Uh, this is KB2. KB3 down here. Yeah. Anyway, I won't bore you with me uh, going through the turn. I thank you for watching. I thought it was an exciting turn. Lots of tension uh, for me. Let's look at the results of the day. Aircraft losses today. 194 Allied losses, 108 Japanese, so incredibly deadly day in the air. I lose 40 zeros. Um, now you may say, oh, well, he lost, you know, 90 uh, Warhawks today. But he has a lot more different airframes to spread his losses out uh, into. So Warhawks, Buffaloes, P-35s, P-26s, Buffalo 1s, etc., etc. Whereas... I only have the Zero and the Oscar. And so taking those kinds of losses, it's much harder for my pools to uh, 
to absorb those kind of losses than it is for his fighter pools, um, which again, are, he's spreading out those losses uh, over more different uh, airframes. Especially right now, because I haven't ramped up my production yet. It takes a while. You can only repair one factory uh, a month. And so it takes 30 days to get 30 factories to produce an additional one plane per day. So losing, long story short, losing 40 zeros in a day, not good for me. Overall, though, could have been a lot worse. And he does lose uh, nearly twice the amount of planes that I do. So I can't, like I said, I can't complain too much. Let's look at ship sunk. Looks at our totals right here. Totals didn't go up by a lot. Total ship sunk, though, do increase. Let's look at last turn for ship sunk. Uh, no um, Japanese ship sunk. It looks like another four um, subs go down at Manila. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now, this is interesting. Uh, they say near Bataan. I think he tried to run some of those subs out and ran them right into the mines at uh, Bataan. Remember, early in the turn, we heard the mine um, uh, the mine sound clip, and then we heard a sub-sinking sound clip. That could have been what that it was. Two destroyers, and they claim the Dominion Monarch. You know, I don't think the points are right for the Dominion Monarch to, to have been actually sunk. And it's such a big ship, only one torpedo. That doesn't sound likely uh, to me that uh, it was sunk. But I don't lose any ships in any day. I don't lose ships it is a great day. I hope you enjoyed that exciting second turn of Yamamoto's Folly. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you in the Discord. And uh, take care, everyone.